morning everybody. So it's really nice to be here. So my, I've been tasked to talk about assembling a rock star team to build a global product. So my name is Girish, uh, a very talented photographer took this beautiful picture of me which I've been using in all the presentations. <coughs> I think he's used all his skills to bring out this picture. <coughs> so whenever I come to Bangalore, uh, something good happens. Like after starting Freshness, the first time um, I came to Bangalore, we actually won the Microsoft Bispark Award, which was a $40,000 cash prize. And I think that was when I met Shraddha for the first time. <coughs> so then the next time we came, we got uh, $1 million funding from Axel. So today is also one such day where Freshdesk was uh, one of the finalists for the startup of the year and uh, this was in today's economic time. So I think the jury is meeting tomorrow to decide the winner but this was good news to me uh, today morning when <coughs> I saw the paper on the, at the airport. <coughs> yeah, thank you. I also wanted to tell you that uh, how many of you here are uh, for the job fair? I can see a few uh, hands go up. So, so basically, uh, the good news here is uh, most of these companies here, like uh, Grofers or Urban Ladder or uh, uh, Free Charge, OYO Rooms, all of us, are, all of them are Freshdesk customers. So, so it doesn't matter to us uh, if you join Freshdesk or those companies, you help them grow, we grow. So. Also, another uh, important point I wanted to say, I saw a lot of speakers uh, here, uh, VP of Engineering or CTO, <coughs> so talking about a lot of tech stuff, obviously, um, because it's a tech audience. So the last time I checked in any code was probably 15 years ago. So I'm not a tech guy, so, and I'm not here to talk about tech to a very knowledgeable tech crowd. So my topic is about assembling a rock star team to build a global product. So I'll tell you how we uh, started. So this is in June 2011, uh, a slide from the Microsoft Bispark presentation. On that day, June 23rd, we had six customers. But the interesting part about those six customers was uh, it came, they came from four different continents. We had two in the US, uh, two in Europe, one in Australia, one in Asia. So we were global from day one. Uh, we didn't uh, start the usual way of going and talking to people at conferences, trying to get customers. We lived our business model from the first day. <coughs> so today, we have uh, more than 45,000 customers across 145 countries. Uh, some of the customers, uh, you can see Xiaomi, Avast is in Prague. <coughs> so truly, uh, we have uh, customers in Brazil, or uh, it's Solar City is an Elon Musk company. We're very proud. They're one of our largest customers. <coughs> so. And we hope Grofers really, really grows fast soon. Uh, they just became a customer last month or so, I think. <laughs> so uh, all of you use Grofers. So, so the reason I'm showing you this slide is because we have built a global product. So which means half of my presentation is over. I'm only going to tell you how we assembled a rock star team. So I'm going to just talk about, uh, see I didn't come with uh, any fancy um, presentation stuff. I'm going to just talk about some of the things that I believe in personally, that we believe in as a company. So I'm going to talk about our culture at Freshdesk, which is why I believe uh, a lot of people chose to join Freshdesk. Before that, I'll just quickly give you uh, like a two slide overview of our growth. So the, the first photograph on the left that you see is our first office, which is probably, uh, say, one by sixth the size of this stage that I'm standing on. Uh, so it was a conference room that we had rented uh, from a friend's office. Unlike Bangalore in Chennai, you don't have plug and play offices at 800 square feet or 500 square feet. So you have to beg, borrow, or uh, go and uh, seek asylum in somebody else's office. <coughs> so that's how we started. And then uh, 
once we wanted to move to our own office, uh, that's the, the second office that you see, was actually a warehouse. Our neighbor was uh, AC ducting storage warehouse. So it was a property of a church. So uh, we actually, it was 700 square foot, uh, which we painted with nice green and yellow colors for the fresh uh, part of it. And then we thought uh, foolishly that we could uh, be in that no, it's, it's no, most people in Chennai wouldn't know where it is. So I wouldn't even uh, try to tell you the name <coughs> in, in Bangalore. So we were foolish enough to think that we could sit there and build software for the world. And then uh, when we got our first $1 million of funding, so we actually thought we'll make, uh, we were about to move to Bangalore, but then we decided against the, that, and I'll tell you that story later, some other day. But uh, we wanted to get out of this building because uh, we had two hour power cuts every day, no water, no power. So a lot of uh, infrastructure problems, not AWS scaling uh, or Node.js uh, infrastructure. So the infrastructure was more basic, no parking. <coughs> so there was only one restaurant in the area. Every day we used to eat lunch in that restaurant. <coughs> so, and I'm not talking about uh, Costa coffee or something like that. <coughs> so, and, and I remember this because when I came to hire somebody in Bangalore, uh, I said, can we meet in Cafe Coffee Day? He said, that's so boring. Let's go to Costa Coffee. <laughs> yeah. So uh, this office is an interesting story as well. When we got $1 million, we wanted to go into a typical IT park, but we wanted only 1,000 square foot. Nobody would give us that. Their minimum was 4,000 square foot. We have to spend 50 lakhs to furnish. Like it's not plug and play. You have to do all the fire sprinklers and uh, BTU meters for AC measuring, things that most startups in this room, I can bet you will never know what a BTU meter is. How many of you know what a BTU meter is? Uh, okay, maybe you studied engineering. <laughs> so I wrote an email to the head of the building saying, uh, we are one of India's best startups. We won the Microsoft BizPark Award, and we like your building, but we can't afford it. And so he said, come with your checkbook, I'll give you a solution. It so happened that Amazon had a dining hall and uh, the builder wanted to chase Amazon to the food court. So they, he told me, okay, he showed me the dining hall and said, okay, I have this space here. You take 1,000 square feet here, build a box and come in. We were very glad to come in because there was power backup, there was water, uh, there was restrooms. and <laughs> so, so that's how we came into this building. And uh, then I think uh, I don't want to go on with our story, but we got 5 million funding. Then we moved uh, to the same building. We got a much bigger 5,800 square foot space. Then we broke the wall, moved to 8,000 square foot, broke the wall, moved to 12,000 square foot. Tried breaking the wall again, but the Aditi technologies wouldn't let us. So <laughs> then we abandoned the uh, entire 12,000 square foot space because I'm a big believer in keeping everybody together. So we then took a 30,000 square foot space and broke the wall and added another 30. Now we are in a 60,000 square foot space and uh, this is our office today. So if you are in Chennai, I would uh, encourage you to come and visit uh, Freshness. And also I'll tell you uh, that uh, we have raised $94 million thanks to all these consumer startups who are burning a lot of money. So there was too many people chasing us with a lot of valuation. So I thought it makes sense to take the money. So we have the last... So the last two rounds that we raised was 31 million and 50 million. We have all that money lying in the bank, even after spending on all the office and I don't know what to do, but maybe we'll probably do one more round. <laughs> <laughs> so, because we are making revenues, right? So, okay, let me quickly talk about, th I think I have 10 minutes and 41 seconds. So I'm going to tell you quickly about there's one, in one line, what is it that we believe about life at Freshdesk? And I've tried to capture it in one line. So our goal is to create a happy work environment for every employee. And I want you to really, really understand that the double quotes is not on the word happy, it's on the word work, okay? So what we mean by that is, see anybody can create a happy environment, right? You throw foosball tables, you have, uh, we have all that, golf course, we have uh, free food for the employees, all of that is uh, there. But what I mean by happy work environment is 
the work that you do as a professional makes you happy and satisfied on a daily basis. That's the only thing that we worry about. And because I've met, oh, I think this went into my mind probably several years ago where I've met so many people, friends, relatives who were all cribbing about their jobs. I used to think if, you're, if you hate your job so much, why don't you just quit and do something that you like? So I think uh, that's the fundamental uh, motive of uh, what we are trying to achieve at uh, Freshness. Basically, we want people to do things that they enjoy and if they are not happy, we can have a conversation and we'll try to make it work. Otherwise, we'll be friends and uh, move on. So that's all there is to it. I'll tell you how we do that. So um, I know all of you, how many of you believe in work-life balance? Right? Okay. So I have a problem with that term and I want to explain. See, work-life balance, okay, by the way, let me clarify. I also believe that all of us have to spend time with family, have, need to have vacations, recharge ourselves, etc. But the problem with work-life balance is it assumes that work is boring and life is something that you enjoy, right? I don't like that. I think what we have been living for, or what I have been living for the past 15 years, including my previous company, was work-life integration. So which means work can also be interesting, life can also be interesting, and as a mature adult, I should be able to choose what I want to do when I want to do it. So I can choose to go and sleep in the afternoon if I'm tired. I can take a driving class at 3 o'clock because that makes my life easier in the future. Or if, I, if a young uh, woman has a kid at home, she could go home early, make the kid go to sleep, and then log in to work at 9 o'clock. We are not, it's, we think it's not our job to force the 40-hour work week on people. So we just focus on making work interesting. We know that everybody's life is interesting, and we let people, we treat people as adults, so that they can choose how to manage their time. So, <clears throat> so hiring. So I'll just tell you um, how we hire. So basically, we don't have any project managers in Freshdesk. We don't even have engineering managers. So our architects double up as engineering managers. I don't know if this is right or wrong, but we have grown till, oh, by the way, we don't even have a HR manager. <laughs> So when I told this uh, uh, at the NASCOM HR summit two weeks ago, I was speaking there, I told them that uh, we grew from six people in 2011 to, to 475 employees. Now we have uh, customers in uh, 145 countries. And I told them I am reminded of a joke uh, of, that, of, of something that our Prime Minister, Honorable Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji uh, said at the previous NASCOM event. He said in India, IT has really, really grown leaps and bounds, right? Do you know why? He said the government didn't understand what this IT thing is and they didn't get into it. And that's why. <laughs> <laughs> so I think uh, that's the same case with us. We never had time to hire a HR manager. And uh, <laughs> so we actually uh, look for passionate people, right? And uh, I'll give you a story of two people I hired from the last uh, year story job fair. In fact, I was thinking why they didn't do it last year. Two years ago, um, like we just found this gentle giant who is sitting here, who was just passionate. Uh, we thought, okay, he's passionate. We can figure out something, right? So that's how we hire. So <laughs> then we identify core talent and ensure that the role matches the person's talent. So what I mean by that is very, very, very simple. We don't look at uh, so, for example, when we go to engineering colleges to hire, the placement officer asks, okay, what is the CGPA cutoff that uh, you want to do? Then we ask them, I ask them, how low can we go? <laughs> <laughs> so, so, basically, we don't look at, uh, we don't uh, respect uh, degrees, we respect passion. We also look at, I'm a fundamental believer in, you can't put in what God intentionally left out. Right? So. <laughs> So what that means is, if we are hiring for a support person, right? I look at, can, he can they communicate really well? Do they have empathy? Do they have detail orientation? Can they listen and adjust the way they are talking based on uh, what, how they are listening? If I'm talking to, a, if I'm hiring a salesperson, are they a natural conversationalist? Can they talk about any topic? Do you feel happy after the conversation? Like, you can have an MBA in marketing and sales, but if you're afraid to pick up the phone and talk, 
your degree or your CGPA doesn't matter. You're not, you're going to be a failure in sales. So like that, we look at, like there are people on the resumes who will do a brilliant job when we can say that it's a tech resume, but the amount of marketing that's gone in the tech resume, you know he's not a good techie, right? You know that, so good techies don't like to put all these buzzwords. They will do the basic stuff and then they will let the, uh, they will talk. When, you, when they talk, you know they are good. So basically that's our hiring philosophy is we try to ensure that the core talents of the people match to the role that we hire for. So for example, creative writing and marketing content writing. <clears throat> so when we hire freshers, <coughs> excuse me. So one of the things I'm really, really uh, scared is that when we hire freshers, we look at our responsibility as an employer, right? Because if I hire somebody in sales, and if they spend three, four years of their career in sales, in all probability they are going to end up as a salesperson in their life, unless they do something dramatically different. So we make sure that, but, but I have gone to college after college where there are so many people who have been placed by the big IT services companies, they put up their hand and say, I want to be in marketing, I want to be in support, I don't want to be in coding. Now imagine, because fundamentally there's no bad employee, there's only bad role fit. That's what is happening, if we correct that, most of the time we have happy employees. And we don't have an employee referral program. We don't incentivize people to refer uh, people to fresh desk. Why would you do that? If, if you are really a friend, you want your friend to have a great career. Uh, so I don't need to bribe you for that. <laughs> so again, one slide on the style of management. There are basically two styles, right? You empower people. Like I used to always say in uh, about your story itself, I know how your story puts all their employees in front where you can know like who are all the people at your story, right? In comparison with other uh, blogs or magazines. So basically what uh, our style is very, very empowering, which means we don't attempt to control everything. So just for, to give you an example, like we can have a customer policy, right? When you can refund, when you can't refund, like uh, how many days uh, can the refund be entertained? So basically our customer policies do what is right for the customer. So put yourself in the customer's shoes. So which means the person who is in customer support has to take a decision, is the customer trying to abuse us or is he really genuinely made a mistake? So we'll do what is right. And then all our managers, basically we try to teach them that you don't be a manager, you be a coach. So which means you understand that your team has different players. If you're playing football, like you try to play to your strengths, right? And we don't go and tell Sachin Tendulkar that oh, your area of improvement is bowling, right? So, so learning. We all know that people really, really enjoy their career only if they are learning something new every day. So we believe in learning by doing, so we don't have any entry level training programs, uh, certification in uh, product management uh, uh, certified. So we don't do the uh, pay money for some certification, but we create a lot of opportunity for people to work on projects to learn. Like for example, freshers who join in development will be building, like, like one of the products that we are going to launch as a free tool is a tool that was built by uh, uh, freshers. Like basically they will put mentors who with for everything like coding and everything. So I think I'm running low on time. So, but I think you get the idea. So also we don't define roles and responsibilities very tightly because see, we believe that if some person has multiple talent, they should be able to work in PR and as a product manager and do some content writing on the blog if they want. So basically we look at it as a work buffet where you can take whatever you want as long as you're adding value to the company. We don't want to say this is what you are supposed to do and this is what you're not supposed to do. When it comes to people, build honest relationships with your team. This is both for the employees and the managers. Give the benefit of doubt. Do not just point fingers. And the last point is don't be a jerk. Be nice to people. Even if you're brilliant, don't be a brilliant jerk. <laughs> okay, one point on growth, and this one is really, really important. Um, so basically, a lot of us in this room do not know how to differentiate between real growth in career and artificial growth. So how many of you went through software engineer, senior software engineer, super senior software engineer, lead engineer, right? It doesn't matter. Do those titles, so then there is 
product manager, senior product manager, uh, director of product, senior director of product, what does the titles mean? Or the, the, the companies which have all these bands like P1, P2, P3, P53 to P57, we hate all of that, right? So can I take a few more minutes? Okay. So basically what we believe in is real growth is based on three key aspects. It's like a tripod. One is your knowledge that you're gaining on the job. Number two is the challenges and responsibilities that you are actually solving in the company based on that knowledge that you have acquired. Number three, of course, is your salary. If all three are growing, then you have a well-balanced career. If one of this is alone growing, like the salary, and, and uh, the other two are not growing, then your career is actually imbalanced. You will realize it later. Judgment may not be served immediately, right? And <laughs> winter is coming. So uh, I think it's the last uh, slide on uh, performance appraisals. So we don't actually, uh, our, our performance appraisal process is called achievements review. So basically we don't hold up negative feedback till the end. We don't want our managers to be sitting as judges and delivering uh, judgments or verdicts. So in fact, I tell the managers there's only one thing an employee wants to know during the performance appraisal. That is what is the hike. Just tell that, don't give, talk about anything else. <laughs> so. I've been an employee too, right? So, and, and we don't do any, so basically, ne okay, negative feedback or any feedback has to be given then and there. So if, if you did something that's not correct, that we feel it's not correct, we'll probably tell you now, not wait till June when the appraisal season is coming, right? So, and then we don't believe that uh, employees should be ranked against each other because it's quite possible you're comparing, like how do you rank a mobile developer versus a marketing person, right? So, and, we don't try to fit our people into any kind of curve. We believe that if you're building a rock star team and uh, there could be yeah, a five member team, it's all team. stars. So I think with that, I would say, this is what I believe in. It's relatively easy to build a company that's loved by shareholders. You can take any large IT sales company. It's good, giving great returns for the yeah, shareholders. Yeah, yeah. Please, but it's much great. harder to build a company that's yeah, right. great for Absolutely. employees and great for customers. But I think it's worth trying. That's what we are trying to do at Freshness. Thank you. Thank you.